And joining us right now on the Rothman Orthopedics guest line, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you read Jer Jersey Man magazine, if you're a Philadelphia Eagles fan, Philadelphia Stars fan, and just a fan of all around good people, Ken Dunnick joins the show, ladies and gentlemen. What's going on, Ken? Hey, Mark. Great to see you, man. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> Absolutely, man. It's great to see you and talk to you as well. Now, first off, let's just, in a matter of emergency here, Nick Sirianni continues to have uh, Pizza Hut. He continues to have now Little Caesars is the latest one. Yeah. All that great food, especially over there in South Jersey, Vito's Pizza and all that stuff, man. Can we get this guy some good food? Can we get this guy some decent food? Let me tell you something. I guess it's the way coaches do because it was Doug Peterson with the ice cream, this guy with the pizza. You know, back then – we were lucky to get a dry chicken sandwich in between practice. So it's a little bit different today in today's NFL. But I'm happy for these guys. They deserve it. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Ken, after your football career, you went ahead and founded and uh, published Jersey Man magazine. You have expanded. You're now actually – you're in Miami, which is why it's so beautiful and sunny in the room that you're in right now. we got the overcast here in Philly. Uh, exactly. it's Take me through the process real quick of, uh, of all that went into Jersey Man magazine. Well, listen, you know, 11 years ago, we decided to uh, develop a magazine featuring men's content, not to be exclusive of women. I got four daughters and a wife. They would kill me if there's anything bad in the magazine. So women seem to love the magazine. But uh, we thought there was an opportunity to develop a magazine featuring sports, wine, cigars, politics, business. And, and we were successful to the point where we decided to launch another market. So Boston Man Magazine is now four years old. We're a developing Miami man, and that's why I'm here with you from Fort Lauderdale. I got the Frank Costanza cruise wear on right now with the deck <laughs> shoes, and I'm looking good in my in my Florida condo as I uh, get ready for a Miami man party tomorrow night. So we're pretty excited. About you look like a million damn dollars, my right. friend. Uh, absolutely. Uh, now, I, I got to ask you a couple of things here. Now, you played on the offensive line. You played tight end for the Eagles. You were on the Eagles' uh, 1980 uh, Super Bowl team, of course. Right. Uh, I, I got to ask you about Lane Johnson first and foremost. I asked Clay Harbor a similar question, but playing with the injury that, that, that Lane Johnson played with, could you imagine trying to tough it out for that amount of time throughout that game against that Giants defensive line to help this team win in the playoffs? It's hard to believe, really, because I've had that injury. I've had the abdominal strain, and it's incredibly painful. You have to be a warrior to do what he's doing. And I specifically watched him from series to series the other night. And you could tell he's about 70 to 75 percent. But even at that percentage rate, he's still better than most right tackles are in the league. His reach and his ability to keep defenders off of him is amazing. And the fact that he's out there doing it for the team is just uh, incredible. What a teammate. Mm -hmm. Certainly. And I have to ask you about the maturation process of Jalen Hurts because we went into the offseason all about is he the guy? What, I mean, do you believe in Jalen Hurts? Whatever. I mean, he's given – every reason for this franchise to make him the franchise quarterback. But I, I've asked everybody this question that's been on the show. What, was there a moment that clicked for you that made you go, wow, Jalen Hurts is the guy going forward. Like he has really put it together in this one off season. Is there a moment this year that you look back on going, yeah, this that's the moment that it clicked for Jalen Hurts? You know, there was, and I'm trying to remember, I went to the Giants game at the link last year and I had an end zone seat. And you could actually tell he was having trouble with his progression. Because of the time he's put in the facility, and you're reading the same things I am, the guy's there and he never leaves. He's the first one there. He's the last one to go out. And when you study like that and you prep your body like that and you train, obviously he had a baseline of talent that could uh, help make him successful. But his maturation process, and I even think his arm strength is better than it was last year. So – you know, he checks all the boxes for me now. He's going to be paid. The Eagles might as well write the check for two or three hundred million right now because that's what it's going to take to keep him. In. And he deserves it because he's the man. He's paid the price, and he's now the Eagles quarterback. I got to ask your take on Nick Sirianni because I would go ahead and describe Nick Sirianni as a rather emotional head coach. You played for a rather emotional head coach in Dick Vermeil. Do you see similarities between the two in their coaching styles? Uh, I do. I think they're uh, they're both uh, good people, number one. And Dick Vermeil has uh, lucky enough to call him a friend for the last 40 years. As a matter of fact, I just had dinner with him last week. And he's as vibrant an 86-year-old man as you're ever going to see. But I think uh, Nick Sirianni is a uh, well-schooled football coach. I think he's a good person. I think he lays it all out there for his team to see emotionally and say what you want to about that. Players buy into that. If they see the coach emotionally 
involved with the team and passionate and doing the game plan and up late at night. Uh, that's created a really healthy environment. So I, I, I love Sirianni. I think he's, uh, again, he's a guy that's improved his game this year. I love his aggressiveness. He goes, you know, for a lot, just like Doug Peterson, which is the way of the NFL right now. So, yeah, I'm very happy with Nick's progression. When you go back to the introductory press conference of Nick Sirianni, a lot of people were ready to just pack it in right then and there and say, this guy ain't it. And then you advance to the flower power speech that he had in this locker room last year. And everyone everyone that might have been, all right, let's give him a chance, might have been like, no, nah, I don't think so. We're out on this guy. That seemed to rally the locker room around this guy and. He's not a player. He did not play in the NFL. But somehow he was able to connect with a lot of these athletes and get them to buy in in a very similar way to a guy like Doug Peterson who did play in the league. What do you think was the key to him being able to identify and lock in with this locker room? Well, you don't have to play to be a great coach. Bill Pelichek, to my knowledge, never played in the NFL. He may be the greatest NFL coach in history. So I, I really think it's all about sincerity. I think uh, the players feel that from Nick. and. They thrive on it, and they bought in. You get In a locker room today in the NFL, you've got to get players to buy in. That team has bought in on Nick Sirianni and his staff, and you know, hopefully it'll lead to a Super Bowl championship. I mean, could you, I don't know what your prediction was, what you expected from this Eagles team, but how far did they reach above what you expected them to do this year? Well, early on, I expected them to win the division because I thought the division was relatively weak. Uh, I was uh, happened to be wrong because uh, so many teams from the NFC East wound up making the playoffs. But uh, Dallas was a good team, but I thought the Eagles were uh, a step ahead. And I really thought <clears throat> the Eagles preseason had a chance to go to the Super Bowl. As the game, as the season progressed, I was more and more convinced that this was the best Eagles team that I personally have ever seen. As you know, I do a podcast with uh, Mar uh, Mark Eckel, and uh, we had. Coach Dick Vermeil on a couple weeks ago and Ray Didinger when, when Mark was struggling with a health issue. And uh, we were all uh, in agreement that this is the best, deepest Eagles team that we have ever seen. I think it's better than 2017. I think it's better than the 1980 team or the 2004 team. So I really do believe that this team is is, uh, is stacked up to make a, a, a deep run and hopefully they'll win this week and go on to the Super Bowl. The, the one guy I think about when everyone talks about you never know when it's going to be the last game, you never know when these guys are going to play together again, is I think it's obvious is Jason Kelsey. And I think you, you look at this guy, five-time All-Pro, you talk about him as a Hall of Famer. Him as a leader, him as the undersized center that he came out of Cincinnati as and what he has built his career into. When you look back at Jason Kelsey as an old lineman as a center of this football team, what really jumps out to you about his career here in Philly? I think he's the best center uh, that the Eagles have ever had. I think that the, his ability to pull is unlike any center I've ever seen. He's he's definitely going to be a Hall of Famer in my eyes. Uh, I believe that he's going to go down you know, with, with Jim Otto and Stevenson and some of these other centers that have made the Hall of Fame. And, uh, and I really love, again, a guy who's passionate. This guy is Philly true and true, right? The, the speech, uh, the day of the uh, victory parade, you know, locked everybody into Jason Kelsey. And he's another guy that's emotional and sincere and passionate about the Eagles. And uh, that's the perfect scenario for an Eagles fan to, to tie into a guy like that. for sure. Can you describe for people what it's like to be a member of the Eagles when you're, when you're going in a deep run and you got the crowd behind you, the support of the Philadelphia fan base, can you describe to people what that's like as a player? Well, for me, my Eagles career was, uh, was such a lark. You know, I didn't, play high school football. I was a basketball player at Memphis State and wound up trying out for the football team, had a good run, and then had some free agent offers coming out of college and chose the Eagles uh, primarily because because of Dick Vermeil. And as it turned out, uh, Keith Crefley and John Spagnola got hurt in preseason. I got to play significant uh, minutes in a couple of preseason games, and they saw enough to keep me. Luckily, it was the year that we go to the Super Bowl in 1980. So uh, for me, every day being an Eagle was a really special experience. The fact that I was on that team that went to the Super Bowl, we go down to New Orleans, I'm practicing, I'm helping the team prepare, and uh, having been a small part of that team, I could tell you there's nothing like it. Having success in Philadelphia is the best because fans want their team to care as much as they do. And, and if you can prove to them that you do care as much as they do, they're all in, baby. <laughs> and, uh, say what you want to about Eagles fans, but 
if they know you care, if they're right behind you. Uh, I do have to ask you a question about the defensive side of the ball here because they've had such an incredible year. Really, Hassan Reddick has been the guy that has jumped off the page when just looking at the stat sheet this year from the Eagles and you talk about all the sacks that he himself was able to acquire this year and then the defense as a whole. Just what have you made of this defense overall with how they've really approached this season? Uh, I think Howie's done a good job of building this defense. The defensive line is stout. I did a, a – a Temple SMU game, I believe, a few years ago when Hassan Reddick was playing for Temple. And I made mention during the telecast, and I believe Hassan Reddick at that time was playing linebacker at about 195 pounds. And I said, if this kid can put on 20 more pounds, he's got the motor and the talent. To me, he looks like a mini Lawrence Taylor. And that's exactly what's happened. He's a first-round choice. Why the Cardinals gave up on him, I'll never know. But he comes in here, brings his talent home, and he's just, you know, his motor along with Brandon Graham and all these guys. It's hard to pick out a guy, you know, Sweat's playing well. Uh, we, we've got a really good defensive uh, team. Our linebackers are stepping up. Bradbury defensively slay these guys can play in the backfield. So it's a complete defense, really fun to watch. Uh, you, uh, I, I got to get your prediction, your early prediction. We're taping this on Monday. It'll air on Tuesday's show. So when you when you look at this San Francisco 49ers team, the win they had against the Cowboys and all that. By the way, does do, do you just always oh, is, is it so ingrained to you to not like Dallas? Is that how it works? Does it just never leave you? Hey, listen, I was rooting for Dallas to win so we could beat them again. So I, I guess it does, right? <laughs> I mean, there's nothing yeah, like beating really, Dallas, especially you go to the Super Bowl. <laughs> I watched that Wilbur Montgomery clip of his run on the, in the 80 championship game over and over. It's one of my favorite moves. <laughs> so it never does leave you. Uh, no. when, you, when you do look at the San Francisco 49ers team, what are you expecting to come out of championship Sunday with the Eagles and Niners? I think it's going to be a good game. I think the Eagles are a better team, and at home they should win the game. Uh, I believe that uh, Brock Purdy has, has played incredibly well up to this point. Um, as a matter of fact, I thought it may have been his worst game uh, this past weekend, and it wasn't a bad game. It was just, you know, Dallas. It was it was basically a defensive game, that, uh, as as it turned out. But uh, he, he's a nice young quarterback. I think uh, his eyes are going to be pretty wide open when he comes to Philly, playing a team that's got a chance to go to the Super Bowl. So we're going to throw everything we have at him. But I, I said it before, and I, I said it prior to this week. I like the Eagles to go to the Super Bowl. I see the Eagles winning this game by seven to ten points, and uh, boy, it's going to be exciting. And hopefully, we'll have another parade in our future. I, I would certainly hope so. As far as the AFC goes, you got the Chiefs, you got you got the Bengals. Uh, who are the Eagles going to face? Uh, in that Super Bowl? I'm, I'm going to go because of the Mahomes injury. I'm going to go with Cincinnati. I think Joe Burrow is a is a rising star. He's probably a top three quarterback at this point. I do think that the, uh, if anyone's had a high ankle sprain, it's much more serious than it sounds. I mean, it can be uh, totally debilitating. I've had them, and it's, it's even hard to walk on it. So he's going to get 24-hour treatment trying to get ready for this game. But I don't think he'll be as effective as a quarterback, and that's pushing me to, uh, to put uh, Cincinnati at Super Bowl. I, I got to ask you. Okay, so Eagles and Bengals in the Super Bowl, love it. All right, now uh, – I have to ask you this because I, I need to go and have a little bit of a history lesson here because as a member of the Philadelphia Stars, you look at the roster on that team and it doesn't get talked about enough, Ken. Just talk about your experience with that team, please, and the guys that you were able to play with there. It was, again, another special experience. I think the Stars and the Eagles would have been a great game back then for people who don't remember. We had guys like you know Sam Mills, Hall of Famer, Kelvin Bryant, one of the greatest running backs ever. You've got William Fuller, who went on to a great career uh, with the Eagles. Bart Oates, who was a all-pro center with the Giants, won multiple Super Bowls. Sean Landetta was the punter. David Trout, the ex-Steeler, was the kicker. And, you know, Chuck Comiskey went on to play for the Saints. Every player, significant player for the Stars, went on and either played in the NFL prior or had substantial minutes after. So having been on both teams, I can tell you that that is a game that everybody would have wanted to see because it would have been a really good and, and, and who was your coach? Jamora. <laughs> it's no, so amazing. No, it's no, incredible. Now we're not going to do we're not going to do the playoffs no, thing, no, are we? No, no, no. Okay. I wouldn't do that. No, I, I I wouldn't do that to you. Don't you worry. Okay. Uh, but uh, Ken, so great catching up with you, my friend. Really great catching up. Congratulations on all the success of Jersey Man Magazine, of Boston Man Magazine, of uh, obviously now Miami Man Magazine. I mean, whatever gets you to Miami, I guess. Fun in the sun, right? Uh, so hey, good exactly. for you, man. 
exactly. My, hey, Mark, I'm a big fan of the show, and uh, you know I've known you for a long time, and continued success, my friend. I enjoyed being on. Thanks. Thank you, thank you so much. The great Ken Dunnick joining us here on the Rothman Orthopedics Guest Like Ken, great catching up. Thanks again. All right, take care, my friend.